In this short video, we're going to look at a few examples of Lewis structures in order to solidify our rules. When drawing Lewis structures, there are two overriding rules to go by. The first rule is use all of the electrons. You'll count up how many valence electrons there are total and make sure that you place all of those electrons in your structure. The second overriding rule is that every atom gets an octet. For some atoms, this might mean something different, which is something that we will talk about a bit, especially in other videos, but the bottom line is that every atom wants its version of an octet in order to be a valid Lewis structure. Let's look at a few examples. Let's take a look at the Lewis structure for carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. First thing we want to do is count up all of our valence electrons. We have one carbon atom, which has four electrons. And we have four chlorine atoms, which have seven valence electrons. Which means we have 32 electrons total that we have to place. We start by putting our central atom first. In many cases, this will be obvious, such in the case of CCl4, it's pretty clear that carbon is going to be our central atom. If it's not completely clear, one thing to look at in one rule of thumb is that the least electronegative atom will be your central atom. Then we're going to connect all other atoms with single bonds. So there's our four chlorines. Remember that each bond counts for two electrons. So we've placed now two, four, six, eight out of our 32, leaving us with another 24 electrons. The next step is to place any remaining electrons as lone pairs, starting with the outer atoms first in order to form octets. And so we're going to start drawing in our lone pairs. So there's six more around chlorine, giving that atom an octet. And every other chlorine gets six more electrons to form their octets. And so we've placed six more electrons around all four chlorines. So we've now used another 24 electrons. And so now we have used all of our electrons. And so that's our first overriding rule. We've now used all of our valence electrons. Our second rule, to check for every atom having an octet, we'll start here with our central atom. So we start here with carbon, has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. That's an octet. And every chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. There's an octet. So every atom has an octet. We've used all of our electrons. This is a valid Lewis structure for CCl4. Let's look now at a Lewis structure for NCl3. So again, we start by counting out our electrons. We have one nitrogen atom, which comes with five valence electrons. We have three chlorine atoms, which each come with seven valence electrons, which tells us that we have a total of 26 electrons to place around this molecule. And so we'll start this Lewis structure by first writing in our central atom, nitrogen. And then we'll connect all outer atoms with single bonds. And each of those bonds, remember, counts for two electrons times three bonds. So we've now used up six electrons. We have 20 more. We're going to start placing those 20 as lone pairs, starting with our outer atoms first. So now we've placed an additional 18 electrons. Two electrons remain. All of our outer atoms have an octet. So at this point, we can now start placing lone pairs on our central atom. So now we've placed two more. Now we've used up all of our electrons. There's our first rule. And so let's check to see if every atom has an octet. Nitrogen has this one lone pair, two electrons, four, six, eight. Nitrogen has an octet. 
Each chlorine has one lone pair, two, three lone pairs for six electrons, two in the bond for eight, and so every chlorine atom also has an octet. And so we've hit our two main rules. Every atom has an octet, and we've used up all of our electrons. Let's look at doing the Lewis structure for water, H2O. Hydrogen has one valence electron. We have two hydrogen atoms. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So we have a total of eight electrons that we need to place. So once again, we'll start with our central atom in the middle, connect our outer atoms with single bonds. We've now used up four electrons. We have four electrons remaining. Now this is the point where we would start to place our extra electrons as lone pairs around the outer atoms. Remember, hydrogen will only fit two electrons around it. And so an octet for hydrogen really just means two electrons. Therefore, we can't start to place any more electrons around our outer hydrogen atoms. And so instead, we're going to place our lone pairs on our central oxygen atom. So now we've used four more electrons. We have no electrons remaining. And every atom has an octet. Hydrogen, or sorry, oxygen has two, four, six, eight. And each hydrogen has two electrons around it, which is an octet for hydrogen. Let's look at SO2Cl2. So our first step, counting up our electrons. We have one sulfur atom with six valence electrons. We have two oxygen atoms, each with six valence electrons. And we have two Cl atoms, each with seven valence electrons. And so we have a total of 32 valence electrons to place around this molecule. And so we're going to start with our sulfur atom in the middle. And then we're going to begin placing our outer atoms as lone pairs around the outside. And so now we've used up eight of our electrons. We have 24 electrons remaining. And so we'll start to place each of those as lone pairs around our outer atoms. We've used up all of our 24 additional electrons. No electrons remain. When we look for our second rule, sulfur has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, so that has an octet. Each oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, and each chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. And so this is our valid Lewis structure for SO2Cl2. Sometimes, when you finish placing all of your electrons in the molecule, you'll find that every atom doesn't have an octet. It's at that point when we'll have to start looking at making double or even triple bonds in order to form octets for all of our atoms. Let's take a look at the Lewis structure for CO2. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen each have six. So we have a total of 16 valence electrons to place around this molecule. We'll start with our carbon in the middle and our oxygen atoms on the outside. We've used up four of our electrons. We have 12 remaining. We'll place those 12 as lone pairs around our outer atoms. So now we have no electrons remaining. When we go to investigate our octets, however, we see that oxygen has two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. And so each oxygen has an octet. However, carbon only has four electrons around it. So carbon does not have an octet. The way that we're going to fix this is rather than a lone pair, for instance, just being on oxygen, we're going to move a lone pair into one of the bonds. Let's see what that does. That forms a double bond now between carbon and oxygen. And now we only have two lone pairs 
on that oxygen. This oxygen has not changed. So let's see where we're at now. This oxygen still has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, so it has an octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight, and so it has an octet. Carbon now has two, four, six, so carbon still does not have its octet. So now we're gonna go ahead and move some electrons from this oxygen. We didn't touch anything over here this time, but now we formed another double bond between carbon and the other oxygen, leaving two lone pairs on that oxygen now. And now when we do our count, we see two, four, six, eight on oxygen, two, four, six, eight on oxygen, and two, four, six, eight around carbon. Now every atom has an octet. So this is what, when you have to look at using double or triple bonds. When you've used all of your electrons, but some of the atoms don't necessarily have octets. You will then look to share electrons between atoms in multiple bonds rather than having electrons remain as lone pairs. Let's look at one more example. Here we're going to look at the example of HCN. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Carbon has four valence electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, giving us a total of 10 electrons to place around this molecule. Carbon is our least electronegative atom, and so that will go in the middle. We'll connect hydrogen and nitrogen to the outsides. This has used up four of our valence electrons, so we have six more to place. We will start placing those as lone pairs around our outer atoms. Hydrogen has an octet already, and so we'll place all six around nitrogen. So we've used up all of our electrons. Now when we look for our octets, hydrogen has an octet. It has its two electrons. Nitrogen has an octet with eight electrons. But carbon only has four electrons around it. And so we'll start by moving one of our lone pairs from nitrogen into the bond. However, we can see that we still don't have an octet around carbon. So we've got to move one more lone pair. This gives us now a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen. One lone pair remaining on nitrogen. And so now we've used up all of our electrons. We have an octet on hydrogen. Two, four, six, eight now around carbon for an octet and two, four, six, eight around nitrogen for an octet. And so this is a valid Lewis structure. And so let's recap our rules and methods for writing Lewis structures. Our first step is to count up all of our valence electrons. Our second step is to connect all of the atoms with single bonds. And if there's any question, always place the least electronegative atom central. The third step is to place any remaining electrons as lone pairs to form octets, always starting with your outer atoms first. Finally, you will form multiple bonds, i.e. double or triple bonds, only if every atom does not have an octet. So as you're writing Lewis structures, remember our two overriding rules that we mentioned in the beginning. One is to use all of your electrons. Make sure that you're counting up all of your valence electrons in the beginning and that you're using all of those and placing all of those in your molecule. Second major rule is that every atom must have an octet. And so that might mean different things for different atoms, such as hydrogen is only going to want two most atoms, however, will want eight. There are some exceptions to the octet rule. For those, I would recommend watching the video, Exceptions to the Octet Rule. I hope this has been helpful and has cleared up any difficulties you might have had in drawing Lewis structures.